My guest today is Eric Potter. Eric, how are you? Doing well, Dave. How are you? I'm doing real well. It's good to see you again after too long. Yeah. One of these days, there'll be some tech events that we can show up at and uh, share a meal. Looking forward to that again. I'm looking again. forward to it. Maybe even a beverage. <laughs> uh, one can dream. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, tell me, what do you do? Uh, I work uh, for a company called Aptera Software. We were recently acquired uh, by Core BTS, which has been a lot of fun. Um, a lot of really new smart teammates that I'm um, enjoying getting to know, getting to work with. Uh, so excited about that. And for Core BTS, I am the technical strategist. That means that in addition to my standard project work, I also get to participate in pre-sales activities and project planning. Well, that sounds like fun. Sounds exciting. Hey, most days it is. All right. Um, we were talking earlier about something called Custo Query Language. Is that a big part of what you're doing? I would say that Custo is one of the things that has been the biggest improvements in my quality of life as a developer over the last three or four years. I spent a lot of time, I've spent a lot of time in my career trying to track down bugs in applications oh, that yeah. I'm that I wrote and I'm supporting. I'm sure there are good developers out there that don't put bugs in their software. I'm not <laughs> one of those developers. You know, I, I, uh, the seem... mythical bug-free developer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but for those of us that do sometimes have bugs that slip into production, it can be a, a nightmare to try and figure out what happened. And so with a combination of Azure Application Insights and the Custo Query Language, we can go from just guessing what is happening in this application uh, to being able to have actionable information and details about what our users are doing. Um, yeah, that's application insights a great tool, uh, but probably the best and the worst part of it is how much data it actually logs. It captures a ton of data and slogging through that trying to find what's relevant is a challenge. And that's where right. the query language helps. Yeah, and um, you know, it's it's a cheap tool, so you, you know you don't spend a, a lot of time worrying about like, oh, am I am I paying too much for storage uh, with all these events? So you tend to log a lot of them. Mm -hmm. But then, like you said, it's you know, it's one thing to just have all that data. The question is, when you get that notification that something's going wrong in production, can you figure out what's going on? I'm sure any developer that's ever supported a production web application has a similar story where you've got an exciting new feature in production. It did really well in your developer testing. It made it through QA testing, it performed well in staging, and then it hits a real user, right? And that user did something and whatever they did, it broke the software for them and they send you an email that simply says the website is broken. That's useful information. <laughs> you know, and it's it's not untrue. It's just not enough information for a developer to come in and and make any kind of fix or any kind of correction. Yeah. And so what we can do with a combination of the App Insights data and Custo is start to figure out what happened. So if I have a username of a user that... Um, emailed the team about some bug. Now I can go in and start writing these Custo queries against my App Insights data. Say, okay, mm -hmm. what what were the last, you know, page what were the pages that this user was on in, you know, the two minutes before the exception? Um, you know, I can look at the exception they can they saw. Um, if I have added some additional um, App Insights logging around specific business events, or metrics around long running processes, I can start to get some information about um, what the user is doing and how the server is responding, how long it's taking to respond, and get interesting information about you know, the memory load and the web server. And so I can go from a situation where I've only got very nebulous information to hopefully getting 
enough information to maybe even reproduce the error in the dev environment or, you know, in the uh, staging environment. Hmm. Uh, how does this compare to um, uh, SQL, structured query language, the one that the query language that I'm most used to? Yeah, so um, that's a good question. And there are obviously some big similarities because, um, and I'm, I'm sure there'll be people that disagree with me, SQL is not like a full-fledged programming language. And I don't say that to like knock it or you know, say it's not a valid skill set. It is, it's not a, a programming language you would use to build applications, or at least not mm -hmm. the entire application. Okay. Kusto is similar in that we're not really building apps with it. We're simply extracting data from some other tabular data source. So the way that App Insights stores this data is very tabular. What I want to be able to do is write a query against those tables and pull out other information, either um, other tabular data or in some cases scalar data where you know I just want counts of things or you know summarizations of things. Hmm. Okay, well tell me about some of the things that you can do with this query language. I mean, I, I'm used to filtering and sorting and aggregating. Is that is all that stuff there? Absolutely. So let me walk you through a real world example. Great. Um, and I've talked a lot about web applications. This happened to be a modern WPF application, so it was a desktop application, but we had a lot of really good App Insights logging in it. Hmm. And we had released a new version of the software a couple of weeks uh, prior to the incident, but then we got in on Monday and we we're starting to get these uh, error reports uh, from users. And it wasn't just one user, but it certainly wasn't all the users, hmm. right? A lot of the users were using the software very su successfully. And so the first thing I could do was go into App Insights and have like a where clause. So I want to say, I want all the events where the username is you know, one of these, I think we had five users that were reporting the yeah. error. We'll call right. them the troublemakers. Uh, you know, and it, was, it wasn't their fault. It was, they were the users that were seeing <laughs> the error. I didn't say it was their fault. I just said I was blaming yeah. them. <laughs> <laughs> well, and one of the interesting things with App Insights is we could see what all the users were doing. And so we knew that a lot of the users were, were not having a problem. It was just the subset of users was, right. was getting these errors. Um, we were also able to pull out the specific exception, exception that those users were seeing. And so started to realize that maybe this wasn't a single error, but it seemed like there, all the errors had to do with long, or with some of the larger queries. And so we were starting to suspect that maybe we're seeing database timeouts. Hmm. One of the things that App Insights also does is um, uh, track the geolocation of the error. So it will guess based on the IP address what state you're in, mm. right? It doesn't, it doesn't know your like GPS coordinates, but it can it can generally figure out what okay. state you're in. So maybe some latency between uh, the data center and the user. Right. Um, and so we were able to start looking at where these users were and realize that they're all in the same uh, uh, geographic location, like a specific mm. tri-state area. Mm. Well, then you can also start to do some aggregation on the data. So I can say, all right, let's look at some of these longer running database operations and let's look at the average query time for the problematic users versus the rest of the users. And so we knew they were hitting the same database but for this one group of users, we could see that it, the queries were taking um, objectively longer. You know, mm. and it's this wasn't just like, well, they said it was slow. Like we knew down to the millisecond how much slower it was. Yeah. And so by about lunch on Monday, we were starting to figure out that there was something specifically wrong with database connections from this one geographic location, mm. and. Um, then we started working with uh, the client's infrastructure team. Turns out that over the weekend, they had done some maintenance on one of the VPN tunnels uh, from one of their specific offices. Well, and there was I something, so there was something was, everyone was connected to the same office and that was uh, slowing things down or forcing timeouts. 
Right. And that's one of those things that in the past, I could imagine taking days or weeks to, to troubleshoot that. But we were able to start collecting information um, almost right away. And, and again, it wasn't just gut feel. Like we had hard data. Uh, one of the other interesting things that we were able to do that day was we had a handful of users that emailed us. But then looking at the exceptions with Kusto, we could see that there were some other users. And so it's a little bit creepy to like pick up the, f um, the phone in that case, or and maybe we use Teams, I forget. But like get in contact with someone like, hey, I'm a developer on this application. It looks like that your app had some errors this morning. Can you tell me about that? And like, uh, why, why are you spying on me? Like, no, I'm not, sp I'm not, not spying on you. Just We're spying just on the application. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yes, but I think what you're doing is you're taking raw data and you're turning that into useful information, That's, which is a, a big part of troubleshooting. Um, I started looking at Custo Query a little bit more closely because I knew we were going to talk about it today. And I learned something. I learned that it is an open source project. I wonder how much of that is the community is contributing versus how much is being developed by a core team. That's really, I, I don't know the answer to that. I would um, love to dig into the code a little bit more and you know, see what, <laughs> see what they're doing. There are some things that I'd kind of like to recommend. And I mean, they're actively developing it. Uh, there continue to be new features in the language. So. Oh yeah. Well, have you been to their, uh, the GitHub page? Uh, only, you know, just to see that it's there, I, I okay. haven't like looked at the commits. The the other thing, oh, neither did I. I but I did read the README. It's a very short README file. But it also says that uh, this is interesting uh, because I've used, just like you, I've used Custo for um, querying application insight. But according to the README, Custo uh, query language is a simple yet powerful language to query structured, semi-structured, and unstructured data, and. Uh, it, uh, it assumes relational data models of tables and columns with a minimal set of data types. So apparently you can use it to query other things beyond application insights. That's what this yeah. what suggests. And I've, I've used it very briefly with Azure Data Explorer. Okay. Um, um, uh, querying like uh, table storage? Yeah. Uh, but I, that's, that was like a, a one-off thing. Okay. Uh, so I, I don't know as much about that. Mm -hmm. um, related to App Insights, uh, but a slightly different, you can use Custo queries to set up Azure alerts. Have you looked at those? Yeah. Uh, that's pretty yeah, nice. So, so you can uh, tell when things are outside of a uh, normal range and have some action take place. Yeah, we had one client in particular that had a big promotion last year for Black Friday and knew they were going to be doing like 10x or you know 30x the normal amount of traffic they had on their site and so we set up a bunch of the azure alerts so our support team which we have you know we have a 24 7 support team you know they could be notified you know is if the average page load time drops below a certain threshold or mm, if nice. the memory memory consumption in the uh in the Azure web app, you know, reached a certain threshold. And so th the idea was that if the performance started dropping, they could bump the, the Azure resources up to, like to the next performance tier if they needed to. Hmm. Um, and so they could kind of proactively monitor the health of the application and hopefully prevent it from crashing, which um, they were able to do. Excellent. But I mean, the, the, the key to that whole thing is that you write these Custo queries and say, you know, I, want to know, you know, you know, I'm going to query all the uh, page load times, you know, for this 10 minute window. And then I want to find the average page load time. And if that page load time exceeds this threshold, you know, and then from there, you're using the Azure alerting um, uh, GUI, uh, which is actually really powerful. Um, but it all starts with a Custo query. Very nice. Uh, tell me about the tooling that you use. Is everything you do inside of the Azure portal or are you using any external tools? I'm doing everything in the Azure portal. It is really well built. Um, the, the query tool that they have right in portal.azure.com. Um, I think it's the Monaco editor. I can't prove that. But just based on how much IntelliSense you have, uh, based on like the tool tips that you get, 
um, based on the quality of the error uh, messages that you can get if you have a syntax error. It's got, if it's not Monaco, it's something else very powerful. Um, something that's got a very, you know, uh, robust, you know, uh, lexer and parser in it. And so, you know, you're just in the portal, but, you know, you're getting tab completion and, you know, getting tool tips on what these different functions do, and, you know, what types this function expects, all those types of things. Oh, that's really nice, especially for uh, folks that are just learning it. That IntelliSense was a fantastic invention. Um, what speaking of learning, where's um, if somebody wants to get started with this, where's a good place to go? Well, if you're in the Azure portal, um, if you're there on on the query editor, mm -hmm. there is uh, I forget the exact text, but there's like a really obvious link that's like go to the docs, which will take you to the Custo docs on docs.microsoft.com. Mm -hmm. Okay, and. Uh, I don't know who wrote those docs, but they're great. I mean, they've got, you know, good examples for all the functions. They've got good documentation around the various data types. Um, yeah, it's it's first rate. Yeah, I think um, uh, in the last five years or so, Microsoft has really improved their documentation. Uh, they've turned it from what at one time was a weakness to a real strength. And so I'm not surprised to hear you say that. Yeah, even when... When it was a relatively new tool, I was pretty impressed right out of the gate how nice. much information there was. How long has this tool been around? Oh, that's a good question. Um, and it really came into my tool set, I would say, in the last three to four years. I don't know if that's exact. I think it probably existed a little bit before that. Mm -hmm. But it was kind of one of those things where we got some really good early results from it and kind of doubled down and said, okay, we're going to just have app insights on everything. Mm -hmm. And um, now all of our apps are connected to it. And once you have that much data going into it, then you're just writing all these Custo queries. Nice. You know, one of the things you can do in the editor is actually save queries. Yeah. And so a lot of our apps, there are specific business rules or business actions that we want to monitor. Um, you know, we, sometimes we want to know like how many times was this thing canceled? And and so you can just save a query that uh, that checks that information. Um, you know, whatever it is in the business domain of that application, there's usually something like I want to know how many times this action happened, and and so you can just save queries. Because uh, some of the queries, I mean, it's not. I don't think I've ever written huge, huge queries, but you know, definitely like 15 lines or more. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's nice to be able to just have those at a glance, and you know, have a have a product owner ask me like, oh, you know, what's going on with this? I'm like, oh, let me load this query and tell you in real time what's happening. Nice. And um, one of the things we haven't talked about, I mean, you can also render the results of Custo queries as charts, right? So, Oh, wow. Yeah, so you can dump out query results to a bar chart or a pie chart or a line chart. Um, I mean, obviously you have to have data that, uh, lends itself, you know, like a, you know, a, a two column table where you have a label and a value. And, uh, but if you do that, then you can dump out these nice charts really quickly. And I guess lastly, then what you can do is then you can take some of those charts and create dashboards. So if you're in the Azure portal, you can create a custom dashboard that's got these, uh, Custo query graphs on it. Oh, really nice. Yeah. So on multiple projects I've been on, we had dashboards specifically for our product owner. Um, we had, again, it was, it was a desktop app that we were working on and the client for various reasons, sometimes would be kind of slow to roll out the latest version of the application. And they had thousands of machines they're trying to update. So it wasn't like they were asleep at the wheel, but right. you know, uh, inevitably, users running the old version of the application were one of our largest sources of errors. And so we created a dashboard. We actually had a chart uh, based, you know, and it would show a breakdown by manufacturing facility, uh, how many users were on the latest version and what percentage were on the previous version. And so our product owner could then just glance at that chart and say, okay, I apparently need to make a phone call to this location because they're only at like 50% installation on the new app. Oh, yeah. And you could uh, even write a query to correlate 
version number versus number of errors to prove the assertion that you made earlier. That, uh, yeah, that, absolutely. Uh, it's it's uh, upgrading tends to reduce errors. Well, excellent. This is really interesting. I have used Custo Query before, but not nearly as much as you have. And I've, I've learned something today. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's uh, any developer supporting an app uh, that's in production. It's just such a valuable thing. And it's a very pleasant language. I, you were talking about SQL earlier. Yeah. Uh, I'm to the point, and maybe it's just because I'm spending more time with it, but I, I prefer Custo over SQL. Ooh, the gauntlet's been thrown. <laughs> All right, well, very cool. Eric, thank you so much for your time, and you stay safe. All right, my friend. Take care of yourself. As a software developer, there's nothing more satisfying than building fascinating applications with interesting technology and coworkers that are also friends.